Right. So, uh, welcome to another stream. Uh, in this stream, I'm uh, going to be programming some uh, or pro programming in Rust, and I am going to hopefully finish up a PR for this project called Git UI, which is a CLI UI for Git. Uh, looks like this. I could probably just um, fire it up in my terminal after. Um, <clears throat> which I've been looking into uh, for a... as a cool replacement just for uh, for using Git. I, I usually prefer using a GUI for Git. Um, just so I don't have to remember a lot of the com uh, commands. And I think it's a bit more... Uh, it's easier when working with a lot of branches, which I do in my day-to-day -day job. So I've been using a client called Fork which is this one, uh, but um, it's been really great. Uh, they recently started charging for it, which is fine by me. Uh, I paid for a license um, because I think they do really good work, uh, especially considering that they have native um, native or native applications for both macOS and Windows. So they're a team of two writing, well, one, uh, each one working on a different platform. And they usually keep pretty, pretty much feature, um, uh, feature, uh, uh, what, what's it called? Feature, uh, the, the parity? No, that's not the word. <laughs> uh, feature parity, that's the one. Uh, feature parity between the two versions, which is really nice. Uh, okay, it looks like this has afford it quite a bit. So these are the things that's easy to see when using a Git, uh, Git UI. It automatic, automatically fetches these things. Um, so, let's just rebase that too. Yep. And um, what Git UI is missing at the moment is, if we just do cargo run on this, uh, let's see. Yeah, there are probably some new versions of uh, some of the packages. Considering there was quite a few releases behind. So the, the funny thing is, um, I was looking at this and I thought, oh, yeah, this looks really nice. Um, I want to see if I can use this. And I almost could. Uh, but what I found pretty interesting is that he used to use Fork, <laughs> which is the client that I have over here. Uh, but they it started to um, uh, well they, they they would stop the free version soon, which uh, made him build this this uh, Git UI. And while I really like Fork, I think this is uh, I don't I don't know it's just a cool factor I guess. <laughs> so I I, I kind of want to see if I can start using this. Um, and so far it has. Quite a few nice features, uh, but it's missing one essential one to make it my daily driver for most of my Git operations, which is support for long uh, commit messages. So if we soon, very soon, we should get the current version up and running. Uh, mm -hmm. do, 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 do. How interesting. It says, oh... Dot four dot oh here, but there's a five oh five dot oh release here. It looks like the cargo tomo isn't updated. Oh, it's, it is here, huh? Oh, this isn't updated after I um, after I pulled the latest release, I guess. Yeah, that's probably it. Anyway. Any second now. Okay, here we go. So yeah, this isn't too interesting because there are no changes in my current repository. Uh, we could just, let's see, uh, go into main and I don't know, just like add a uh, space here. We'll save that. And you see it pop up here over here. We can see that yeah, there are some changes. We can have a look at the changes. Um, 
there are some uh, features that are missing. Oh, let's see. Hey, there's new shortcuts here from the previous version. Stage all, stage item. So at the bottom of the screen, you can see that we've got different shortcuts to do different things. Uh, two stage. Oh, oh, okay. So those are W and S now. I see. They used to be one and two, and the tabs have become become the numbers. Okay, I think that makes a bit more sense. Okay, I like this better. Yeah. And that still works, okay. And yeah, okay. So this actually looks better already. Um, let's see, if I stage this, oops, jump over here and we do commit. So as you can see, at the in its current iteration, the commit dialog is pretty basic. You can type and that's about it. If you hit enter, you commit. So, and you don't see a cursor uh, or anything. So, it's a bit bare bones, but it works. Uh, so, this is a commit. Oops, commit message. Dot dot. dot. Hit enter, and it's committed. And if we can, if we have a look over here, we can see that. that it, oh, sorry about that. Mm -hmm. See over here, it's committed into the. Uh, into the repository. Uh, let's see. Let's just reset this. Do, 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 do. Um, wow. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> and let's just do a hard one. Yay. There we go. <clears throat> so what I want to do is actually implement part of this um, issue, which is support for delegate commit message, message editing to a terminal editor for longer messages, uh, which will pretty much solve the thing that I want because I almost always use multi-line uh, commit messages. So I n pretty much need that to make uh, GUI work for myself. So I will implement that. And the way I'm thinking of going about it is, uh, there are basically two ways to, to launch the full commit message uh, interaction or, or UI, I guess. So we could either have, and let's see if we stage this. So at the, uh, at the moment you can hit C, to start the commit. And I see two possible solutions. One of them being hitting like shift C which would then get you into the longer version um, or, or the, the editor version of the commit message submission or that you hit, hit C first and then do some kind of combination inside of here to jump to the long version. Um, the only problem is you could probably do like something like control, hmm. Control something. I don't know. It feels more natural just doing it like a like a shift C, almost like an uppercase C. So we got C, which is just a small message uh, or a short message, and then you got shift C, which is an uppercase C, if you will, which would take you through the long message. It kind of feels um, a bit like how hmm, it feels. Na it feels more natural for some reason. So I think I'm going to do that and just make that a PR, and we'll see what. Um, I'm guessing Stefan, I, I think he's Swedish. I don't know actually why I think he's Swedish. Maybe you see him. His name is Extrawurst, which would indicate maybe German. I don't know. <laughs> um, I'm actually quite intrigued now. What do you guys think? Just give me a hint at your nationality. I don't know why, why this is important to me. Yeah, this is pretty cute. Uh, okay, uh, let's just leave, <laughs> leave it at that. <laughs> I have no idea why I thought I was so. So it's either Stefan, I'm guessing, if it's if he's Swedish, or just Stefan. 
or something. It was uh, German. I don't know. Um, so either way, Stefan, uh, we'll just have to um, see what he thinks when I commit this. Um, so yeah, uh, let's uh, understage this. And if we, oop, old shortcuts already. I can do an uppercase D, confirm, file reset, and yes. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, let's see. Uh, let's head over to C line, which is my preferred Rust editor. And I've had a look through the repo already. But I think. Okay, let's start with, let's see how he triggers commit messages. Right, so in this file, I know that he, uh, or that they've got a lot of uh, things set up. So in here somewhere, see, here we go. Key event, open commit, yes. Uh, could I just do like a lookup on this? Okay, so it's used one place, and this that's here. So, let's see. If self-focus changes, okay. If it's not working there, okay. Self-cube, borrow, mute, blah, blah, blah. Push back, internal, open, commit, true, okay. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Status stage file, okay. And that launches this other event, which is called open commit, which again is used in this. Hmm. Self commit dot show. Right. Right, and I know that this commit right here, and if we do this, that refers to instead of these uh, app, uh, no, the struct called app, um, he stores a reference to a, a commit component, uh, which has the built in function show, which will do the right thing. So, I think the. Hmm, <laughs> Do we need this? I don't know. I haven't looked into it. Uh, update git is quit. Any work pending. Private impulse. Okay, that's in a separate impul block. Okay. Get tabs, tuckle tab, switch tab. Okay, so he's he's got some... They've got some, some navigation... Uh functions here process queue process internal event which is where this comes in <clears throat> let's see draw pop-ups okay draw tabs okay so there are some navigation events in here set tab and switch tab for example so i'm just trying to figure out where would the best place to put this function which will open the external editor And I'm guessing that would kind of be here. But we also have the problem of, we probably want to reuse. If we jump into this component, this will probably have a function for uh, committing, well, or running the commit command through git. So, this implements component only. Okay, this is the impl block. Yeah, commit, here we go. This is probably the one. Mm hmm Right. So, hmm. 
there's this whole okay th there's this, this whole function which goes through and does the whole commit thing and it would be a shame to not reuse that now the question is should i extract this to a separate function and just reuse that or should i try to hook into this existing one i'm kind of torn uh, this has a show function where does that come in here okay so that's an impl from from component i'm guessing then Yeah, okay, so that's that's from here. Okay, so it doesn't necessarily make... I kind of want to just do like a show editor. Maybe in here, and have that call this and instead of this line right here, I could pass it in as an option over here. And if the option is specified, hmm, no, hmm. Okay, I think I'm gonna hide it in here. Might be a bit weird having the component show something else than itself. Hmm. I'm just gonna write it up, and if we need to change it later, that would wouldn't be as difficult. As long as we just have a an, uh, a draft of the code, we can just move it around a bit after we got it working, which should be fine. Yes. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see, we'll, we'll do like a show editor right here. Um, we'll start with just a borrow itself. And that'll return, yeah, it'll probably be a result of some kind, so we'll just do one of these. As he's done, uh, as they've done, they've done that those before. So what we want to do is, we probably want to create a temporary file, temporary file, and what we'll do in this file is we'll probably put in some comments explaining how to use it. So if you've ever used, uh, let's see, if we go over here now, um, if we do to get status. We have some stuff here, and we, if we do this, we get this editor. Uh, this is Vim, uh, in my case, which explains how to use this file, uh, add some stuff over here, everything that, uh, every line that starts with a hash will be ignored, uh, and these are the files that will be added. Now, I don't think we'll, we'll need to use it to show this message verbatim, but something line that please enter commit message for your changes. Line started doing, starting with a hash will be ignored. <clears throat> and that's what this uh, temporary file will show. So if we have a look at the bottom here, um, without actually checking this, but I'm guessing this, uh, I'm just assuming this is a file that uh, Git um, creates automatically inside of the Git folder uh, that lets you do this. So we're just going to do basically the same thing for uh, get UI and uh, and uh, yeah so we're gonna create a temporary file I'm not really sure I don't want to root around in the dot git folder so I'm thinking that we should probably just add it to like the temporary um, directory for get UI on the machine uh, to prevent uh, any collisions that might occur. Uh, so we might just say, like, uh, use um, temporary, temporary, I'm sorry, wow. <laughs> uh, 
uh, directory for app. Uh, next thing we want to do is uh, launch the editor. And I see two possible options here. Uh, use existing Git settings or rely on some de facto editor or rather environment variables. And I'm leaning towards the latter. We could try to read like Git settings and see if they've configured anything, uh, but I'm not really a fan of that. Uh, but I'm thinking that we might do, uh, I think it is, I will have to double check this after. Um, Git editor is the editor preferred by Git. If it's set, if that's not set, uh, it will try to use uh, the editor specified in visual. And if that's not set, it will try to use the editor set in editor. So I'm guessing that we'll just use the same thing. So we'll try to read editor. If that's not set, use visual. If not, use editor. And that should probably behave the expected way for, um, for people using Git already and trying out Git for the... Oops, um, the first uh, time. If you see me doing some corrections uh, some of the time, that's because I've recently changed keyboard and keyboard layout. So sometimes um, old muscle memory will take control and start typing the wrong letters or symbols, symbols mostly. Uh, so pardon that. <laughs> I'll just uh, I'll just use that as an excuse for my poor typing skills. <laughs> Uh, okay, so after we've launched the editor, editor uh, we'll get back, we can read the file. Uh, so read the file, uh, and at this stage we'll have to determine um, uh, clear comments, and then we'll uh, read, 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 get the commit message. And as a sub 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 thing here, um, if no message or uh, if no slash empty message is submitted, abort commit. Just as Git will do by default. And as the last point, and this uh, will um, pass the commit message to the uh, commit oh, not that way uh, function so that's the commit function that's oh, uh, down here and we'll see how we how we how we handle that when we get to it but um yeah let's not dwell too much on that now so I think this is a pretty nice outline for what we're supposed to do uh, let's just uh, close uh, not that's not the one um, that's not the one we want. Uh, so, uh, I think the first thing I want to do actually is actually hook up the the um, shortcuts just to make that work. So we're just going to copy this line and add some oops, some extra bits to the end of it. Uh, so. Looks like he's short. Uh, they've shortened message to MSG before, so we'll just use that. And it shouldn't be no mod. It should be with mod. So I think it's just with mod. Really. Yeah. So we're gonna have a shortcut with a modifier, and we start by passing it a key code, and then a key modifier, which is just comma key modifiers. Oops. There you go. Uh, do shift like this. Oh, that's supposed to be in key modifiers, like so. Excellent. So that will help us out with that. And right where this is defined, uh, do, 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 do. So over here, open commit, it says, 
Yes, okay, that's... That's good. So we'll just do another match right here. Keys. Uh, open, commit message. Oh, hmm. Not liking that name now. Okay, we're, we're going to change that pretty soon. Uh, let's just... What is... Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, so it has some conditions going here. If self is not working there, or... And not empty. Oh, right, so it checks if it's in the working there part of the UI. And that it's not empty. Should probably have that checked, too. Yeah, so we're going to steal those two lines. Paste them in right here. Yank, I'll have those. Like so. And then... Okay, I find it a bit weird having the lines like this, but sure. I would have put them in the end like this. I'm going to do that. Oh, sorry, I don't know if you can hear me whisper. But I'm going to do that too. Um, I think... I'm just going to assume cargo film is... Yeah, wrist film is set up, so... Cargo film is probably going to clean this up for me. Could, can I enable that by default now? Well, let's see. Uh, but you note down here, but if we do uh, language and frameworks, maybe? Rest, yeah. Uh, uh, faster, but not disable. Ah, let's do that one. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Okay, the, they're actually kind of... Let's use click, clickbait. Ooh, with additional arguments. I see. If it does not endless code on the fly, when does it? Hmm. Run rest from, on save. Yeah, let's do that. That's nice. Then we're sure it always is well, as it should be. I'm thinking... I should probably check out how the formatting is, uh, or what clip arguments are used in the... Uh, I'm just assuming that they have a have a clippy check in the um, GitHub Actions uh, CI, so but we're gonna do this. Okay. So Cargo Fump is uh, gonna fix up uh, all my coding. Um, uh, what's it called? Asyncrasies? No. Nah, whatever. Well, well, whatever. I'm not. I'm doing wrong with the code style. So let's see. Um, if it is empty, let's see, self queue, borrow mute, push back, internal event, open commit. Okay, so we're just passing, we're listening for the keys and then we're passing an event. Right. So we'll just copy this too, actually. Should have just copy everything there. And we're gonna add open. Uh, okay, first of all, I'm just gonna change this. Uh, that's this shortcut. Oh, that doesn't work. Uh, and we're going to change this to editor. That's what I thought uh, intended to write, but didn't do. Uh, open commit. Editor, like so. Uh, let's see. And here we are going to doo -doo -doo, open commit editor, like so. And we'll do. Oh. Doing a bit of indexing. Uh, we did visit those before. Where were those located? In that? Is this where internal event came from? Came from? Internal event. Ah, still indexing. Come on. Oh, it's doing the rest uh, or the macro expansion thing. Oh, that's probably going to take a while. <laughs> okay. Ah, here we go. Managed to get it working. Um, yeah, so nothing is documented here. That's fine. Um, commit editor. Just add that here. And then we'll add a handler for this. 
Uh, pretty much about here. Let's see. Where art thou? Open commit. Here we go. Let's just do one of these. Uh, edit. Uh, show editor. And then we'll go all the way back to commit to show editor and uh, I'll guess we'll hmm. you know what I might hmm. Hmm. should I do all the easy things <laughs> stuff first uh, let's see. Uh, uh, where is it that it shows command bar? Set command. Self dot commands. Force all is false. Where does it get commands from? Uh, oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, there you go, there we go. Self the commands. Commands is a vec. In self components, if C the commands, force all. Blah 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 blah. Toggle tabs. Uh, so it always shows these. But it starts by going to the components list and asking for commands. So if I go into commit, probably look at compile commands. Yes. Yes. So we'll do boop, 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 boop. Like this. And commit enter no 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 that's not the one I want no 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 um, uh, let's see I want the main window which is an app I think uh, events uh, let's see Probably has a draw new uh, let's see make a reference to itself. Self commands. Oh, so it shows multiple components at once, right? Uh, <laughs> but which component is probably one of these? Commit list command changes sounds very. Oh, right. Well, that makes sense. Open commit editor. Yes. And here are the commands. Right. Oh, let's see. Commit open. Yes. Order minus one. Uh, that is on command info itself. It says order minus one. Does that mean the end of the kind of looks like it means the end of the, uh, the thing? Does it do that automatically? If we have a look, oh, yep, there's a lot of errors. Uh, ah, but I have Git UI installed. Here we go. So this is the previous version. So this one has commit 
Okay. Not, sh not really certain if that's relevant, but... Hmm... I kind of thinking that the... Okay, I'm just gonna... I'm gonna do this first. And we'll just do one of these. Like so. So we'll do an editor. Like so. If it's empty, um, if and or for a stall, yep, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, okay. Looks good. Uh, let's jump back here. Uh, let's find the show editor. Let's just head all the way down here. Let's just return an OK then unit inside of it. Like so. Uh, show editor is private. That it is. Oh. I, oh, come on. There we go. So it's supposed to be public. Uh, do, do, do a function with this with mod. What did I, oh. Didn't even write mod correctly. Uh, let's see, let's jump to keys. Uh, with. There we go. And let's see now, cargo. Some more errors, of course, not found in commands. Commit open editor and. Oh, <laughs> wow, uh, just a lot of stupid typos today. Uh, let's see. That's supposed to be uppercase and inside of changes. Yes. Oh, that seems to be like a local thing. Ah, yes it is. Oh, right, because it explains... Ah, right, I see. I see. So, if we find... Close, slash, slash, blah, 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 blah. blah. Commit open. Oh, this is a complete list of everything. Okay. Yeah, sure, that works. Uh, so let's just make those five lines and paste them in. Um, open editor, like so. Uh, uppercase C, open commit pop up, available in an empty stage. Um, Open commit editor. Uh, command group commit. Yep, that sounds about right for grouping. Oh, and then empty stage. Uh, command test. Uh, text. Blah blah blah. Let's try that again. Okay, that seems promising. Uh, yeah, I could bump up the text. Um, let's see. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, doo -doo 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 font. Uh, I'm guessing probably a 16 should be fine. Ooh, that's really big. I'm hoping that's more clear. I <laughs> uh, should probably fix that in uh, my terminal too. Uh, let's see, that's in um, config dot alacrity dot alacrity? No, what is it? Is it not in here? I think it's in other config? No, that's not one. Ah, oh, that's one. 
Uh, let's see. Font. Yep, 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 yep. Blah, 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 blah. Point size, 14. Let's uh, try setting that to 16.2. Yes. Oh, that's, uh, here we go. There we go. I think that should be more readable. I should really have thought about it because I really hate when streamers have <laughs> small font sizes. <clears throat> but there you go. Uh, let's see. So, okay, so everything builds. And if we have a look at our thing, uh, if we stage this, for example, and we jump over here, we see that commit with an uppercase C is present and with a lowercase C. Ah, right, small screen, yeah. I've tried watching some streamers, um, a quick streams on my, on my phone and it's just not possible. <laughs> Which is kind of sad because it's mostly on my phone that I watch stuff uh, while laying in the sofa or something. But yeah, can't have everything. Okay, so the text is wrong down here. I'm just gonna fix that too. <laughs> it's kind of, I don't know, anticlimactic that I fix everything else than, uh, no, uh, yes. Now I'm guessing, getting uh, getting a small uh, or coding working on a small screen uh, it would just be like a huge window in the middle of a screen, I guess, and uh, over the whole screen and just a few lines of code. Uh, how long have I been using Rust? Um, I guess it's it's a bit over a year now. Um, it's been kind of on and off, or yeah, kind of. Mm. <laughs> uh, the fact of the matter is. Um, I don't use Rust in my day-to-day -day job. I usually work in .NET and C Sharp and some front-end. But um, most of my hobby projects have been in Rust in that time. And uh, so I'm not as proficient as I wish I could be, but this is one way to work at it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we'll just name it commit editor for now, I think. Naming is hard. Uh, let's, uh, you know what, I'm actually gonna set up this. Uh, so if you haven't used WatchExec before, it's quite a nice tool. Oh, this is gonna be really hard to see on, uh, you know what, we're just gonna make this even larger, actually. Uh, let's see. Nope, 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 nope. Not like that. Oh, okay, there we go. Uh, that one. Uh, font size? No. Point size. Uh, oh, right. Uh, then. There we go. Whoa. Okay, that's big. <laughs> uh, that's easy to read. Okay, so at the bottom here, I got this watch exec thing going, which is really cool. What it does is it watches files and executes something when those files changes. So um, at the, in this case, it's watching files with the extension of RS. Uh, it's watching the this path, which is your source. And the dash R says that it should restart the process uh, when it watches changes. So in some cases you might do like, um, say for example, you do echo every time um, uh, something changes. That process stops after it's printed the message, so you don't need to restart it. But if I do cargo run as I do here, that process won't stop uh, at any point because the um, this uh, CLI tool and specifically uh, don't, doesn't exit before you actually exit it. So you need to do this restart, which will send a signal to kill it and then restart it. So you do uh, commands for watch exec, then double dash, and the command you want to run. And uh, in 
in addition to that, I also want to run, uh, pass in some, I do cargo run here, and then I also want to pass in some arguments to the CLI tool itself, which is another double dash with the dash L, which makes it print to logs uh, in case I want to read the logs or something. Uh, for sure, I've never worked professionally in C sharp, just gaze longingly from a distance <laughs> whenever I had to use Java. Oh yeah, cargo R is just a um, a uh, function that I've set up. Um, so I'm using fish for my terminal, and I func ed, I have a uh, let's see functions. I have a function set up that's just called cargo R, I think, in here somewhere. I thought. Apparently not. <laughs> Um, I think it's a, something I set up. Is it? Actually, I could not quite remember how I set this up. I might have. It might be an alias. Oh, I don't remember. I think it's something I, I've set up. <laughs> yeah, I'm really liking fish. I've switched uh, a year and a half ago or something, and um, I'm never going back. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's um, let's see what shakes sec. Yes, this one. So this is going to fire up the tool and recompile it every time I save, which is nice. Yes, I use Starship. Yeah, it, 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 Starship is a nice community. Uh, I did some, I did a couple contributions myself. Um, so if you ever do, I have to brag now that we're talking about it. If you ever do, um, the Starship, oh, let's see, what is it? A, a game, explainer? Explain? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. This is, this is my contribution. The, um, so if you actually jump into somewhere interesting, it tells you all the parts and yeah, this is a problem. <laughs> this alignment is a horrible mess. Uh, sometimes it, these emojis are really hard to calculate the width of. So I had a lot of struggles getting those right. But um, yeah, if you type search to explain, it tells you what each part of the um, thing is. Which is nice if you jump into a, uh, some kind of directory and there's a huge string from uh, some Starship and just wondering what the hell is all this. Then uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a nice thing. Uh, yep, so let's see. Okay. <laughs> oh, actually, it has overflow support. That's really cool. Um, instead of here, uh, let's see. Dot. Whoo. Cool. I thought this would be the next problem. <laughs> Having too many uh, things down here, but it actually solves it. Excellent. Okay. So uh, we got uppercase C. And that does nothing, which is expected. So it doesn't seem to break anything at the, at the moment, uh, which is a good start. I made the bit where it figures out what modules to run. At, uh... Oh, right. I made the bit where it figures out what modules to run a bit faster, especially in larger directories. Down for 300 milliseconds to about 20 milliseconds some of the benchmarks. Wow, really nice. I, I really like that feature. So good work, man. <laughs> I, especially I had, um, there's one of the, the one of the, uh, uh, one of the, um, uh, the repositories at work, which have, uh, I think it's like five years of history and there's a lot of history in there. And, before it would probably take Starship like twenty seconds to parse through all that. So you've really helped me uh, help me out <laughs> when using it at work. Uh, yes, let's see. Create temporary file. Yeah. Yeah, the git studge module and starts struggles with bigger git repos yeah yeah it's I, I it's working for me now 
So I'm 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 assuming that's your work. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so it was it was horrible, but now it works quite nicely. Uh, I don't really notice any slowdown, so that's good enough for me. Uh, let's see, create temporary file. Yeah, so in this case, I'm thinking that we should create this temporary file in uh, the temporary directory for the app. We could uh, co-op the .git directory inside of the repository, but I don't kind of don't want to mess around in there uh, in case it's by some kind of freak accident, muck up some things and destroy some kind of essential part of the Git repository. You could always clone it anew, but still, it's not a good look to um, ruin anything in, anything in there. So let's see. Uh, we should. Um, I, I know this already uses the uh, what's it called the deer, deers. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Is this the right tumble? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, deers. So that should give me some kind of uh, uh, yes and template. Mm -hmm. It has the cache there, data there, public video. Hmm. I know that they use cache there somewhere else. Does it have any documentation? Uses cache directory. Okay, so I see that on Windows, it uses the app data, data local, which I know to be the place I want to use. Then I'm assuming that these other directories are approximately right too. Uh, so I'll just use cache there. And I know that this, uh, let's see if we do like a find Uh, no, but uh, this is one. Uh, cache. Uh, do, 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 do. Just patches, pushes Git UI. Get app config path. I should probably just use this. Is this? It's not public. Crap. Mm. No, it is. It's in the main thing. Uh, maybe it's available to me. I don't remember how this works in Rust. Uh, let's see. We have a look in here. Mm. Okay, so just all the way in here. So I'm assuming that that makes it work. Ah, we can just do this. Nice. We'll steal that. And we'll jump back to this. And put that up here. Uh, actually, we will put it in here. Um, like so. And then, we'll just jump down, down here. Oh, oh this is what I wanted. there we go. And just get a comfy path. Um, We need some kind of name for this file. Uh, what should we call it? Um, I should probably just hmm, 
Can I? Hmm. Can I just do like a um, uh, commit message? I mean, oh, that's a really long name. Okay, we'll we'll leave it like that for now, and we'll. Commit message editor. Ugh. Yeah, not too sure about this, <laughs> the naming here, but uh, we'll leave it like this for now. We can clean it up later if we. Oh, I always meant to say. I see you mentioned that you uh, gaze at gaze at C sharp longingly whenever you had to use Java. Uh, I have to admit though that C sharp is better than Java and. In all honesty, I, I kind of I'm really fine with with C sharp, especially the evolution with C sharp eight and nine. It looks really really nice. Um, but it kind at this point it's it's nice that it's becoming so ubiquitous because it's quite a nice language. They've done a re some really good work with the language. But when I compare it to especially Rust, which I think is an even better or more a better design language than C sharp and and I, I it just it feels like a letdown jump back to C sharp after you have written some Rust it, it yeah uh, it, Rust just feels better in a lot of, a lot of ways and also I, I I it always annoys me when I write .NET Core stuff uh, on on Unix platforms because there are so much legacy that were that's just so rooted in the Windows ecosystem with naming conventions and uh, ways to do things that it kind of feels a bit liberating not working in C-sharp uh, sometimes uh, with more generic naming, I think. Rust has breathed life into program for me. Yeah, me too. Uh, it's, for me, I've, I've always had a fascination for programming languages and Rust, is to me the perfect mixture of um, like um, what I like about a lot of pro uh, functional program languages is their aversion to exceptions, which a lot of C style languages really like. And I always hated uh, exceptions. Uh, they uh, often they impose weird syntax with all the the the, um, the scopes that they introduce with the try catch or the there are variants everywhere, so you always had new scopes or everywhere. So you have to define uh, variables aside of the try to make it available after the catch block is done. And there's a lot of weird stuff going on there. And Rust and a, and a lot of functional programming languages just throw all of that out the door and just say, you know what, this function can actually return multiple types. So here's a way to represent that directly inside of the language, which is so much better. Um, I'm very fortunate to get to use it occasionally in my day job. Oh, we're slowly migrating horrible old Rails app to Rust. Oh, nice. Oh, that's really nice. Uh, there's not a lot of Rust going around. <laughs> so it's really nice to be able to do it in uh, at work. That's, uh, consider yourself lucky, my good sir. <laughs> yeah, the result is beautiful, yeah. So I'm guessing it's a web app or, or like a web backend of some kind. Uh, what kind of, um, uh, what kind of, uh, framework are you using? I'm kind of um, curious. I also think actually Go has a quite a nice um, a way to solve the whole exception kind of thing where it does, it does kind of the same thing as Rust does where you don't have any exceptions, you just have uh, panics. And if you panic, the, the whole thing is supposed to just start crumbling down. And you always pass back a tuple of uh, two values where you have the result and an error. And if the error is nil, uh, then then there were no error. And if the error is set, then you have an error. Uh, it's kind of, hmm, it's not as nice as how Rust solves it, especially with the question mark operator, but it's better than exceptions. Oh, with lambdas, nice, okay, yeah. I'm a fan. I'm a fan of um, of uh, well, serverless. I guess it's kind of a loaded term, but but like like functions uh, or like cloud functions or call it whatever. 
<laughs> you were Googling for, to 1418. Okay. A lot of Go experience. Uh, yeah, I've used some Go. Uh, I, I wrote a bit for a few months at my old job. And I actually kind of like it. I like the, the simple syntax. There's not a lot of... It's easy to get introduce people into Go. And most of the time, it does exactly what you expect it to do, which is, which is good. And the descent library is also... Uh, Agree with the uh, better than exceptions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, Go is really nice. I like the standard library. It's really feature complete, which is really good. It's uh, easy to introduce new people into Go, into Go, I think. And also, especially now with the newer versions where uh, with um, uh, the Go modules and everything, it starts coming really nice to, nicely together uh, with uh, how you handle dependencies and everything. Honestly, I don't let go. I think most of the things that are most mo most things that are considering using Go should skip a step and use Rust. I'm not gonna say you're wrong. <laughs> uh, uh, in some cases, I think um, I think Go has a an, uh, the learning curve of Go is not as steep as Rust, which might be. A boon, uh, might be a maybe be a what's it called? Uh, an advantage, I think. Um, and also considering that they kind of have better support for uh, working with multiple threads or, or like um, uh, asynchrony, asynchronous stuff. If that's if you have a lot of asynchronous stuff, I at this t point in time, I think Go hands a bit better than Rust. I don't really like the way Go does it, really. If you, uh, especially if you're supposed to um, run something on a background thread and then return the result, I, I don't really like the channel paradigm. Um, maybe because I'm a bit unfamiliar with it and it just feels clunky. And I think Rust has a lot better potential right there. Go modules is such a great step forward with language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really like that they they kind of prototype the whole thing as a separate project first, and then kind of did the, uh, okay, here is the actual version of package management for Go. It took took a while to get there, but they, I think they actually did package management quite right in the end. It's a strong opinion, weakly held, as I say. <laughs> okay, yeah. I think they really benefit from generics as well. Yeah. Um, I didn't miss generics as much as I thought it would, I would, but when you really start missing generics, it's really a hard loss. <laughs> yeah, the learning curve argument is extremely valid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For us, it's pretty steep, especially considering the, the borrow checker and everything and the kind of different kind of programming it enforces. I mean, it's, it's good programming, but it's, it's a, can be a bit of a struggle to get there. Go routines are really sweet. There's a bunch of Google internal libs for doing concurrent programming that the standard library would really benefit from. I hope they work it in. Okay, yeah. yeah but Go routines are really nice. I mean, they are a really good way to handle um, with, with working with um, parallel computation, I, I think would be the right term. Um, I really like how, how easy that is, and uh, and it works really nicely. But I I, I, I never really like the channel thing. <laughs> May, I, it might just be because I, I never really use it, and it feels kind of clunky to me. But uh, yeah. Uh, so let, yeah, let's get back to this uh, thing that I'm actually doing. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, yes, uh, what's a complaining? Okay, just, it's not a word, that's fine. What's over here though? Expected colon got, okay, so it probably needs something like this. Okay, doesn't seem to be yet. Uh, let's see. Uh, so we've got the path, we should probably go, 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 go. Push, uh, 
push some texts in there. Um, I'm thinking, should I just make a string maybe? Let's start by doing that. So we'll just call this, um, I don't know, template. Oh. Uh, yeah, sure. Let's not spend too much time on naming things. And we'll just start with a, a new line and then one of these and say, enter your commit message. Another new line. Oh, oh wait, wait a second. I think I can do uh, th oop, 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 oop. this. Yeah, and then I can do, let's see. If I do this now, I think maybe I should add another one of these just to make sure. I think I can do this. Uh, we'll have to see when we get there. Enter your commit message, uh, message. Line starting with hash will be ignored and uh, empty commit messages hmm. empty commit message well abort the commit yes Okay, I'm, I'm just going to continue. Uh, let's see. Uh, what's the... Um, <laughs> is it like... Uh, okay, but we're just going just gonna to Google this. Or rather, Google it with Dr. Go. Um, I think it's, there is a shortcut of some kind, isn't there? File write all, yes. Uh, this is the one, file create. And yes, okay, that's the one. Let's just use that. So we'll do file, and I think it should just give me this one. Create, and that's gonna be config path. No, uh, it it uh, it had frozen. The stream had frozen uh, for me as well in my on my backward back of monitor, so it seemed to something freaked out. But um, everything's fine now. Just uh, thanks for giving me a head up, heads up. <laughs> uh, let's see. I always like this question mark syntax, by the way. I have to say because it always looks like you're questioning what you're uh, what you just did. File create. <laughs> Which is pretty accurate of how it works. Uh, so let's see. Yes, we need uh, to keep track of that file. I'm just doing this. And write all. It takes a buffer. Yeah, because you can just convert strings. File read to string. That's probably. So if we do tem template, uh, probably just make this mutable, I'm guessing. Yep. And this should probably as bytes. Uh, yep. Then it's the next part, which is open it in, a, in an editor. Uh, let's see, that's going to be, uh, get, uh, get, get them. Is that the one? No, that's, that's the go one. <laughs> uh, env, uh, I think it's just, like, 
mustard and a var. Yeah. And okay, so we're going to start out with git. Got uh, caps lock was on. Uh, let's see, git editor. Uh, just to make sure, we're gonna just look up that it is correct. Um, change editor. Oh. Set the git editor. Yeah. Okay. So that's right. And that gives us a result. So I'm just going to throw, make that a. I think this does what I want. Returns the option if it contains a value, otherwise, returns opt B. Yes. Arguments passed to or, or are eagerly evaluated. If you are passing a result of a function call, it is recommended to use or else, which is lazily evaluated. I will be using a function call. But it doesn't really matter because it's looking up something that's static mostly. Okay, I'll use this. Yeah. Uh, so we'll use. Okay, let me. We have to import std and var, so let's see. Use std and um, and then we're we'll, then we're going to look up. Visual, make that an OK, or else we're going to look up uh, b -b 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 editor and make that an OK. Oops. Okay, so now we've got an option of string. Uh, how did they handle app config path? Let it be okay or else. What does this return? An option. Okay or else, or it throws an error, right? Okay. We'll just do the same. Oh, okay, or else. Uh, let's do anyhow. With a bang. Uh, probably need to import that. Uh, Anyhow, there we go, let's do that. Do we have that in here already? Mm, yes. So we'll just do anyhow, like so. Let's see, here we go. Anyhow, uh, failed to find Editor. Man, I never can write preferred correctly. Change to that one. Yes. 
and then we do question mark. <clears throat> so at this point, we'll have the editor ready, and now we just need to launch it and wait for it. Uh, so I'll look up how to do that because I don't remember having just done it one time before. Uh, launch uh, process, I guess. Okay, so either command new args output expect. Uh, preferring blah 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 blah. Default configuration during blah blah blah. blah. Well, program gives a path. Miller methods allow blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. Command can be reused to spawn multiple processes. Change the command without needing to to spawn the process. Okay. Okay, so we'll just... Get command new. Uh, yeah, and here we'll get a an interesting thing where if we receive one of these and this might actually be multiple arguments in a single uh, for um, in my case, for example, I have I have editor uh, set to vim, and that works nicely because if you just pass a file name after vim, vim as a, it, it works as expected. But you might want to use uh, VS Code or Sublime or some other editor, and for setting those, uh, the problem with those is that they won't uh, block. Uh, they they will return the process will return once the editor has launched, so you need to pass. I think for both Sublime and Code, you have to pass pass. Uh, I think it's dash dash wait, which will make it hang around and wait for the command to finish, or rather to, to the process to exit, and then it will return, which is what we want. We don't want to return before the, before it's done, but we have to support that they might actually enter multiple commands in here. And so we need to split the string that we receive in from in here. We need to split this, pass the first element to new and any subsequent elements into the args um, build um, build method builder method over here. So let's see. Hmm, maybe I should just split it at once. Yeah, I think I'll do that. Split it on spaces. Then it becomes a split of strings. And should I check if it's empty first? No, I'm going to leave it like this for now. Uh, let's see. If we do editor dot, do I have like a, no, uh, take This needs to be mute. Um, 
What? Does it, does it accept that? No. Concurrent structs, blah, blah, blah. If the program's not actually path, the path will be searched in a always defined way. Yeah, so that does what it's expected. Okay, I'm assuming it's not gonna work with a, with an option. Does seem to be fine with it though. Uh, where it can get an S. Does option, or rather, does OS, no, wait a second. As ref, is that implemented for? Uh, kind of seems like this should maybe work. Okay, we're gonna leave like that and see if it works. Uh, let's see, to, oh, to something, to owned. Um, I want it to be, what does this actually want? Args I, I'm guessing something iterable. Where I is an into iterator of item S. Yeah, so I think it's just worth passing this. Having already selected the first item, it should just get the rest of them. This might actually work. <laughs> Uh, yeah, okay, so let's see, output, what does that bring us? And a result of output, do we really need that? No, can we just wait maybe? Hmm. Could just throw away the output. Is there any other way to, we could use status, I guess. Okay, we'll just do status. Execution commands child process, waiting for it to finish, and collects, collecting its exit status. By default, that is an answer and error are inherited from the parent. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Failed to execute process, blah, blah, blah. Process of blah, blah. Okay, so we'll blah, 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 blah. we'll just do this, and after that's run, we need to read the file. Ooh, that's interesting. Uh, we should probably release this in order to make it available to the editor. Um, do I just drop it? Oh. I don't remember how I released that resource. Uh, let's just use um, Do, 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 do. No mention of, uh, no, it's probably called um, close. When they go out of scope, errors detected, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this can be used to handle errors that will look up when file is Close dropping a file will ignore errors in synchronizing this in memory data. Should I probably call dropping file will ignore errors in synchronizing this in memory data? Maybe I should actually call sync all before just to make sure. Hmm. I 
attempts to sync all OS internal metadata to disk. Seems kind of superfluous. Should I do it just to be sure? I'll do it just to be sure. Feels kind of weird. Hmm. I'll leave it off. But I need to drop it anyhow. I could just do this, I think. But I don't want to do this. I, I know this is, this works, but it's not the, or it should work, uh, but it's not what I want to do. I want to do this one, I think. No, that doesn't seem right. <laughs> this one disposes a value. This does the call the arguments implementation of drop. Yes. This is what I want. Like so. So that releases the file. Uh, nice, nice. I could just put, put it in a, in a sub block, but uh, meh. I'm gonna keep it like that. Mm, yeah, yeah. Not really sure which is more idiomatic, Rust. No, I'll just leave it like that. Okay, so we've dropped file. Uh, so we'll just re, we'll just shadow the previous value here. Do file, open. And do the boop 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 boop. No, what was it? Uh, config path, yeah. Config path. File, read. No. What was it? I think it's up here. File, write all. Read the string. It's not showing up. Oh, right. I need to um, do this. There we go. Read to string. And that takes a something to write to. Uh, we'll just do let message be a new string. Just passing a reference to that message. Pass up any errors. Oh, this needs to be viewed, of course. Like so. Is there something else? Oh, oh, a mutable reference, of course. Um, <clears throat> okay, and once all that is read, we should probably, I'm just going to oh, move this up here, I think. And this is your, uh, Um, it's probably a link. No. What is the command for? Oh, I probably need to go via the FS namespace, I'm guessing. So we do FS. Uh, unlink, maybe? No. File? Unlink? No. Move? File. There we go. Config path. Link on Unix and the file function on Windows. Path points to directory, they use the permission to remove the file. Uh, so we should probably just drop the file first to make sure that we're not trying to do anything before it's released. Hmm, maybe we should. <laughs> Should we 
defer the deleting of the file after the commit maybe, just to make sure we don't screw it up. Kind of uh, torn here. Um, oh, nope. Again, I, <laughs> I have a new keyboard and a new keyboard layout, so sometimes my fingers don't want to write the correct symbols. So you'll just have to bear with me. <laughs> I'll leave it there for now. And we'll see how it works out. Yes. and then pass the commit message to the commit function, right? So the commit function is just down here. And what it usually does is it tries to read the uh, text of a component shown on, uh, on screen and use that as the message. But we don't wanna do that. So what we're gonna do instead is create a new function. Uh, we'll just close up this one first. Call it commit underscore message, I guess. And we'll take a mutable self and it returns a result of this, like so. Uh, oh yes, and also a message that's a string, like so. That should make that work just as it did. And what this does is of course just uh, calling the self dot commit message with that message. Like so. That shouldn't change the API for the existing code. And then I'll call, right, so this calls self with beautiful self. Uh, right. Here's the thing. We need to change this to a mutable self, like so. I always start out my function with just um, with a read reference a shared reference to uh, to self, and then only um, upgrade it, if you will, or elevate it to a mutable a mutable reference if I need to. Uh, let's see. That's gonna be yes. So, what we need to do? We need to look at the message, and if there are any lines starting with a with a hash we need to skip those and if there are no if there are only white spaces left we should skip the whole um the whole committing of the message should just be aborted so uh get lines okay that returns lines apparently an iterator over the lines of a string a string slices mm -hmm. lines are and either with backslash n or character term with line feed backslash r and the final line ending is optional uh, okay the final is optional Right, right. So you can, you get it still. Okay. Right. So you don't get no. Okay. So you don't get an empty line at the end. Right. Oh. Okay. So we'll do lines and we'll do filter and we'll do a predicate uh, L for line and F L. Okay, so that's a string slice, and that's a reference to a string slice. Um, if 
if I do into iter, do I then get, nope. Okay, see, now I'm on a bit shaky ground, let's see. I don't think this is a problem, actually. Ooh. Starts with a pattern. So I'm guessing this is just a regular string pattern. So it starts with this. It shouldn't be included, right? So what we're left with now is only the lines that don't start with a hash. And we want to check if they are only white spaces. Hmm. Just collect this right back into a string, I think, by doing um, message string, like so. That should work. Um, See, is there any particular stream is empty or blank? Both string and string has gone empty. Oh, right. So we can just use that. Bang rust string. Uh, that one. Uh, it's empty. Merge is a string. It has length of zero and false otherwise. Yeah, that's not the same thing. Truncates removing all its contents. Okay. Not drain. White space split. Split the string by white space. Okay, and how does that differ from just a regular split? Ooh, because that's what I use the other place. Okay, so it can be an even a. So it could just be this. Yeah, so you prevent. Uh, yeah, this is the problem, right? This is why you. One split Y space. Right, I remember this. Should I maybe just use split Y space instead? I think so. Uh, let's see, where is it? Here we go. Split oh, Y space. Should it just be ASCII Y space maybe? It's probably what I want. Nah, I'm going to leave that back. There we go. Right, so this is going to change the message, right? And then we need to uh, get whether or not it's only white spaces. So is empty, it does not work. Yeah, that's not what I want to check. Trim white space, blah, blah, blah. So 
So I, I'm guessing that this might be a bit of a it's a nominate string containing only characters that have pattern white space Unicode property. Pattern white space. Ones where serve only separate tokens in the grammar have no semantic significance. Right, that's okay, that's just for the source code itself. Uh do, 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 do. Hmm. Let's see if there are more answers to this. String that is blank, composed only of white space, and you want Unicode string slice which will be true for both empty strings and strings composed solely of white space Unicode property. Only string slices implement Unicode string slice, so you'll have to use string as slice if your string TLDR S dot is white space. If, uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, this is what I want. So, if if message dot as slice be helpful <clears throat> uh, is white space why is it giving a warning for this? No documentation found, what? Import, okay. That doesn't seem right. Okay, we're just gonna head up. Soldier on in the belief that it's wrong somehow. Ah, unstable external crate, right. So that's why it's Freaking out, I guess. Uh, let's see. West is white space. Okay. So we might do a check on string. Oh, hey man. <laughs> wow, this is really cool. Uh, so, um, <laughs> the maintainer of uh, GitUI actually showed up. <laughs> wow. The, and then I checked your first video and laughed so hard when you started talking, talking about fork and so on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, that's that's really interesting. So I guess I get, I'll get some live input then on uh, on how to uh, how to implement this correctly. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, oh crap! Uh, isn't there a um, uh, iter? Oh. Is there like an iter on this? So cool that you're gonna tackle this. Yeah. Um. So. The thing is, I, I just discovered GitUI last week, and and uh, uh, I don't know how far you watched in the first video or the first part of the stream, but I, for almost all my commits, I use multi-line commit messages, and uh, it wasn't, uh, as far as I could see, it, it's not possible yet in GitUI, so I thought, well, 
let's let's fix that because <laughs> that's my big biggest like block for using it daily um uh so uh, or at least try to use it daily and, and just use uh, fork as a supplement to uh, get UI. Uh, so let's see. I'm trying to remember <laughs> how to iterate over a string. Oh, car, car, cars uh, is the one I want. Yes. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, all, I think, two. And if, let's see. Too bad I'm somewhere with bad connection. I guess I gotta check out the recording later. But this is so cool. <laughs> oh, awesome. Oh, <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, I, I think I'm actually gonna upload this to uh, YouTube also. I haven't put anything on YouTube yet, but it, it is my intention to do, to do that with this thing. So we'll see. Oh no, can barely hear anything. I really hope it's not my stream that's messed up. Oh, that would be uh, that would be annoying. Anyway, cool of you to drop by. Uh, that's that's really cool. <laughs> uh, is white space? Oh crap! Come on. I'm back to this. Is ASCII white space? No, I think I just want regular UTF. -8. Oh, it's nice. Okay, so if all of them are not white space, uh, do self commit with a message and pass in the string. Like so. Uh, like so, maybe. And then do okay. Yes. Or rather, I should probably just return this actually and do an else that way yes okay let's save that and see what happens over here Yeah, sure. Um, extra worst at, on Twitter too. Yeah, nice. Oh, I have to ask you: Are you? <laughs> um, where are you from? <laughs> I was kind of wondering aloud to myself uh, at the being of, beginning of the stream, and uh, <laughs> it, it's kind of uh, <laughs> embarrassing at this point. <laughs> but I have to ask. I w I was guessing at Swedish, uh, considering your name is Stefan, but. Uh, then I kind of considered you might be German, I guess. I think it might be proper spelling for a German name, too. Since your name was extra worst, it seemed like a German uh, German username. Uh, okay, so this is not optimal <laughs> when using watch exec. Uh, usually I manage to figure it out, but I think I might just have to exit watch exec to make this readable. Let's see. Hmm. <laughs> The traits that convert as ref is not implemented with standard option. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is this is an error I should have expected. Uh, it's right over here. This next is the problem. Uh, uh, let's see. How do I want to solve this? Uh, do um, I could maybe Let's see, let command be editor dot next. Um, uh, 
donut unwrap. But okay or else. Yes, I think this would be right. Let's just use anyhow and say. Um, what should we say here? Um, an unable. To read. Editor. Command. That seems a bit weird. Okay, we'll leave it at that for now. Okay. Uh, let's see. <laughs> oh, these messages are not exactly the trade stamp as represented been for result anyhow. Seems like it's not liking the create part. Stood result result path buff an error. Okay, let's see. File open. The trait bound. Results that convert as ref. It's not satisfied. Oh, right. This is probably the problem. Right, right. Uh, config path. Oh, because this returns a result, maybe. Yes, it does. So we do this. That should do wonders. It's billing. Oh, the power checker. Use here after move. Use a move value, config path. Yes, that seems right. Uh, boop -a -doop -a -doop. This is a string, and then we do this. And we pass it in here. And we move it, basically. If we do this, I think that should work. And for the next... Uh, that's not the wrong. There we go, like so. And this is not the last time we use it. No. Oh, that's not what we want. We want one of these. Uh, yep, that seems right. Let's see. Building once again. More errors. Cannot borrow as mutable. Let's see here. Oh, up, up, up. Creates a temporary which is free while still in use. Temporary value is free at the end of this statement, borrowed later used here. Let binding, uh, you consider using a let binding to create a longer lived value. Okay. Okay, I might actually need to <laughs> do a proper check of this now. Oh, but you know what I could do is, um, oh, my window in here. Oh, let's do another like so and cargo check. Do 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 do. Waiting for us to compile. 
Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Okay. Okay, this is interesting. <laughs> it gives me a different result. Sure. Yeah, split white space is probably not a a problem with this. There we go. So let's do another cargo check and see what it finds now. Okay, here we go. Yeah, okay, this <laughs> this error message was probably a bit hard to um to format correctly. So let's see. Creates a temporary which is freed while still in use. End of this thing in the late, late used later here. So it's referring to editor. Okay, I wasn't aware that I was. Hmm. Okay, this this one further down we can probably fix pretty easily. Um, yeah, so this needs to be a this needs to be mutable. But it takes ownership of the... Oh, right, but it's not... Hmm. What's the idiomatic way to do that, I wonder? Is it, is it like this? Does that work? No. <laughs> that does not work. <laughs> um... I'm just gonna do this. That should probably fix it. Feels a bit weird doing it that way, but um, not really sure how else to do it. Should could probably, uh, no, I should probably take ownership. I'm guessing. Hmm. Yeah, we'll leave it like that for now. <clears throat> Okay, now I'm actually a bit stumped. Uh, I'm not really sure. Temporary value is freed at the end of the statement. Yes. I'm clearly missing something. So this creates a new temporary value. Then I reuse it all the way down here. And then I apparently free it right here. Will I try to use it down here? No. Okay, so I should probably just do this in two, in the two, um, oh, it's called. Um, uh, Editor. Does that work? Let's see. Waiting for file lock. Okay, we got some warnings, but we actually managed to build it. Yay. Convert the identifier to uppercase. Yes, okay. And the other way that must be used, file write all. Okay. These are good errors. These are errors that are easy to fix. Uh, let's just jump to 100. And, oh, that's not the one. 
hundred and nine. There's is there a quick fix for this? Uh, yep. There is. So that should be fine. And then it was 119. Uh, we can do blah, 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 this. So there we go. And if we now do a just a quick, whoops, cargo check. Nice. Okay, let's go back here. This also works now. Excellent. Ah, yes, but that doesn't work. So, <laughs> our shortcut doesn't work. Uh, oh, wait a second. Do I need to... Nope. Ah, oh, that actually works. That's nice. So, we're in here. And in theory, uppercase C should send us to the editor. But it does not. So, at this point, we need to figure out where we are going wrong. I launched this with logging enabled, so we should be able to go to... Uh, do, 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 if we just... Uh, yeah, uh, it is... Uh, dash I get UI. And we... Oops. We want uh, that one. So in here, there should be a log. Let's just bat that log. Ooh, that's locked. Let's jump that down to the end. Let's see. Doesn't look like there's any errors logged. I'm not really sure how it logs those. Let's just do something banal and log that. Uh, so if we import use log, I think, yes. Um, info, I think that's one of the uh, show editor. Let's just. I don't know. Info. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> uh, let's just do like a template here, maybe. It's building. Could the compile. Reporting to pre's error, which is somewhere up in here. You might be missing a string literal to format with. Oh, right. That's not how you use this. Um, this is how you use that. Recompiling. Do, 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 do. Okay, here we go. Uh, uppercase C. And let's see if that shows up in the logs. We do this. Could I tell these logs? Yes, I could. Did I do that? No. Okay, so that's not showing up in the log at all. Okay, so we're probably airing out before that. <clears throat> so, I'm thinking maybe we start by looking in app. I think that's the first place. Okay, if we go to keys, we can see where this is used. It's used in here. And if we uh, 
registered key combo. Uh, that should be uh, log info. Building, bum, bum, ba -da. Running, yeah. Okay. Shift C, Shift C, Shift C. Okay. So look at logs. Okay, so we're seeing the event here. Oh, it's an uppercase C with shift. Okay, that's not confusing at all. <laughs> that's not a, uh, let's, let's see, shift, is it used with any, I think I saw something else using the shift modifier. Here we go. Yeah, so it's an uppercase, okay, that's, <laughs> I, I see why it's that way, but it's still weird. But sure, let's do this. Okay, uh, let's jump back to this window. Wait for it to compile. And now if we go down here. Wow, that actually worked. Uh, apart from the fact that I forgot to pass in the file. <laughs> Well, we can't do everything in one go. Uh, let's see, quit out of this. And this did something weird. Okay. So we got a bit of ways to go, but that's progress. Uh, let's see, let's remove this log here and go here. And let's just, I don't know if it, why I imported like a use on the top here. Okay. Uh, like um, 109. Oh, right. <clears throat> okay, so now we got that sorted. Uh, let's see, down here ish. Where did you go? Editor. Yes. We get the command, pass it in. Uh, the args are passed in like so. Yes, so what we need to do next is. Uh, we also need to append the um, concat that doesn't seem right um Fairly sure there should be a way to like uh, append another. What does this do? Combine all an iterator's elements into one element by using extend. Okay, that's not what I want. Yeah, I know what concat does. Duh. <laughs> I've, I've used it somewhere else. Okay. Uh, I know that there is a, oh, maybe that's just only available on, oh, right, but of course, uh, let's see. This is a string. Uh, so we do editor the push. Yes, yes. And then we push, um, what do we push? We push, Uh, with a space and then the thing, uh, like so. And this should be... The config path, like so. Yes. Um, 
that should be sitting like this. Uh, this should probably, oh, this is a little bit awkward. I think that works. Ooh, let's see. Oh no. <clears throat> What's it saying though? Pub type result. Oh, right, 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 because it can't be, yeah, 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 yeah. That makes sense. Uh, does two string work here, maybe? Unknown, that's not very helpful. That's a path buff. Right, how do I... Okay, was it a known here? That's weird. Okay, let's just help it along a bit and see. Okay, so there's two string slice, but there's an option. Then there's two string lossy. Of course, a path to a cow string, any replacement character. Okay, we'll just do that one. Oh, and it's building. And there's a warning. Oh, we have an unused import. Dun dun da. Uh, iter tools. This one, I think. Compiling once again. And. Wait a second, did it commit? Because there's nothing staged anymore. Yeah, it did commit. And it committed. <laughs> this is not right at all. Ah, uh, man. Okay, let's, uh, let's just reset to here. And we'll just do a mixed one. Should update any second now. At the, at the moment, it... No, it unstages it. Um, at the moment, it... Um, uh, this app uses um, polling to fetch updates from the file system. Uh, but there's an issue that it should probably use a watcher instead. Um, which is probably right. But I'm not going to concern myself with that now. Yes! Yes, it works. My master plan works. Right, so we get the extra lines with the comments, which is good. Um, why is it behaving weirdly? <laughs> okay. Uh, for some reason, my... Uh, I'm not really sure why, but it's behaving a bit weirdly, but... Sure. Uh, no right since last change. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so this is also problematic where it renders both the UI and the previous log messages on top of each other. Uh, but what I'm seeing is these messages being, in, oh, oh, that's not one. Uh, let's see. 
Uh, let's do this one and then twice of this. Yep. Yeah. I'm just gonna move that back. Oh, that's not what we want. Like so. There we go. Okay. Uh, so that will make that work out. Um, But hold on a second, did we commit again? Yes, we did. Okay. So that's not what we want. It looks like it's not doing what I want it to do. Uh, so let's reset this again. And we're gonna make it a soft. That's what I want. So this is updating correctly. Uh, let's see down here. Uh, that's too far. Here we go. Pass commit message to the commit function. Yes. Message dot lines. Oh. Dot filter. If the line starts with hash. Don't include it. To me, that's what this line says, but apparently that's not what Rust sees. Then I make that a string, and then I do a check. If all of these are white space, if all of these are not white space, commit that, or else just return. So this seems to be working fine. It seems that it's this line that's tripping something up. Are the lines wrong? Is it not reading the end, uh, line endings correctly? Is that the problem? Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. It's because of the message. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, should we trim the... No, we... Pro I probably want to leave it as is. I'll leave it as is, I think. I'm not sure. Nope. I'm really sure, but it's for some reason making me type everything twice. Hmm. My starting with that would be ignored. This, oh, come on. What is this? Okay, so it looks like it's passing on some keystrokes to the underlying stuff. That's ah, problematic. Okay, but it looks like the stage, stage changes are empty. Right. So let's see how this works. All right. This looks right, yeah. Okay, good, good.
Yeah, so I think the problem is right now that there are two there are two programs trying to fetch every keystroke. And that's creating some problems. And it's also showing these two on top of each other, which is not what we want at all. And I am a bit uncertain on how to solve that. Git seemed to make it work, so it shouldn't be impossible. Well, at least it Git doesn't mess up with mess with the editor while you're editing. Hmm. Just to make sure, though, uh, if we go back here and we reset this, use the soft reset, like so. Then go back here, we get a lot of changes. We open the editor and we just exit out. Okay, that seemed to do the right thing. Yes. Apart from the fact that it unstaged the changes, which is not what I wanted. Okay, what does it do with... Oh, so this is not what's blocking the... Or oh, now catching the escape key events. That's the exit pop up. Okay. Set of component exit pop up is hide. Okay. So if I understand this correctly, uh, the commit component assumes that if you return an OK, everything went well, and you shouldn't. Now why does it stage it again? OK, I'm going to make a note of that in my notes here for later. The notes are physical, so you won't be able to see them on screen. I have a book. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, files are staged when aborting an aborting commit with editor okay let's leave that for later Let's just close down all these that I'm not using. Let's see. Because app moved back to the 
staged area, or rather the unstaged area, which it shouldn't do. Uh, I should probably tackle. There's this render bug, and then there's the. I'm gonna note this too, actually. Um, render bug when returning from editor like so uh, and also um, must double type just to call it something double type when in editor there we go Okay, so those those are the three things I think I need to fix first. And after that, we're... If I get those three things fixed, I think we're pretty much there. Uh, there will probably be some cleanup of variable names and maybe some messages and text and everything, but I think we're mostly there. Uh, this might actually be needed... Uh, needed I might actually need to extract this somewhere else. Um, they might want to keep that in a separate file. I know that there is this strings. So maybe this should contain all strings. It just contains the commands at the moment. No, no, no. It has some other text here. Yeah, so we we'll probably should move that in here. Yeah. We just do this now. It's mostly just this template. Yeah, let's do that actually. Uh, let's see. Message title error. Uh, do we have anything from for committing? Where did I see it? Uh, type commits message. Okay. So if we do any of these, um, just call it um, editor message. Yep, do a couple of those. And then we'll just do yank inside of this. And then Then we'll do uh, instead of this, paste, whoops. Well, I'll try that again. Yank inside of these, then do so these. Oh, oh, this is not working at all. Oh, that's not working, okay. Fine, uh, we can do this. Yank two lines up. Uh, commit editor message, yes. And then we'll just do ba 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 ba, five lines down, remove that. Commit miss editor message. see was there any other like 
Nope. Okay. That was the only one. Right? Okay. Uh, yeah. I think I'm just going to leave it at that. Um... I'm going to leave it at this for now. Uh, the clock is past midnight here, and I should probably get to bed. Um, so there are three main things to fix. Uh, I'll probably have to do some offline research. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the stream just trying to show off my Google Foo, which is not very strong. Not that strong, at least. Um, so the main problems are... Um, I need to tap every key twice to write when I'm inside of the editor. I think that's a problem with both Git UI and the editor trying to catch the keystrokes. So I have to stop Git UI from trying to capture all the keystrokes. Uh, the next thing is when I return to Git UI, uh, it renders Git UI on top of the previous messages uh, or the previous um, things in the in the uh, terminal, the log in the terminal, and the Git UI is rendered at the same time, which causes problems. So I need to fix that. Um, that might actually be fixed just by rendering a black square first. Hmm. Let's, uh, I'm gonna write that down <laughs> for later reference. Um, let's see. Rendering uh, black square. Uh, on whole screen. Oh, that's not that good English. Okay. Let's just Put an arrow back at that one. Might fix. Yes. Okay, so I've got that noted down. So those are two other problems, and the last problem being the double typing, the double rendering. I guess there was something else, but I can't quite remember. Yeah, those are the two main problems then. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was also the the um, uh, the files being moved back from the stage to the unstaged changes, which is weird when you cancel. So, hmm. not really sure why that happens. It pr it's probably somewhere hidden somewhere in the code. So I'll just have to read the code a bit more, I guess. But yeah, uh, that's it for now. I'll. Um, See if any of my recordings are any good and upload this to YouTube, I think. I think that might be something new and interesting to try out. So, yeah, thanks for watching, people, my good folk. And I'll um, see you in the next one. <laughs>